Gino Mayer's seminar for today. Today we have a very special uh, guest speaker. Um, I think quite a rare, often you hear, in, you see in Japan, there's uh, those, uh, very loud here, very loud. Very loud. <laughs> Testing, this one's better, okay. Um, as you know, it's very, uh, the, in Japan we have quite a few big multinational global operations, sorry. but uh, the chance to meet one of the board of directors directly is quite, quite rare chance, but today you have that chance. And uh, to meet uh, one of the members of the board of one of our biggest companies and oldest companies, Mitsubishi Corporation. Uh, today we have um, Mr. Nakahara. He's the Senior Executive Vice President of Mitsubishi Corp. Um, not only will you hear him to give a talk, but at the end of this, uh, there will be a Q&A session. So do take, do take this chance to one-on-one -on -one ask and find out, you know, the real questions about globalization, global work, global business. Um, let me just give a bit of, bit of background. Uh, uh, Mr. Nakahara joined Mitsubishi in uh, 1973, so he's been a very long uh, career, uh, and uh, was in the, the metals business of Mitsubishi Corp. Um, and also, he was... Uh, the uh, CEO of the European Operations, uh, I think based in, in London. Uh, after that, went to Beijing and represented for China. Of course, now China is the uh, biggest uh, trading partner for Japan. So a very important uh, post. Um, and then in uh, 2009, became Executive Vice President uh, for Global Strategy, uh, Corporate Financial Officer. Um, and currently a uh, member of the board, as I mentioned, and senior executive vice president. So uh, please let us welcome uh, Mr. Hideto Nagahara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Erutona. Uh, my name is Nagahara. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I don't know how many minutes do I have? One hour? Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Well, sure, of course. Um, the professor kindly introduced me and uh, mentioned that I was in London and also in Beijing, two totally different uh, cultures I have experienced. But um, before that, when I was very young, uh, perhaps uh, uh, similar to your age, uh, in my 20s, I lived in Brazil for two years. And uh, in my 30s, I lived in North America, uh, New York, and uh, Vancouver, Canada. And then I lived in Tokyo for 15 years. Then at my um, early 50s, I went to London, then Beijing. So I have uh, um, different uh, uh, or diversified experiences in living uh, in different cities and uh, uh, having a business businesses with uh, many different people. And what I will uh, discuss with you today is uh, basically my experience in dealing with uh, people, different people, and uh, living in different places. But uh, I uh, want to summarize what I will say in this uh, paper, that is, uh, what is Mitsubishi Group? and what is Mitsubishi Corporation, for which I am working now, and uh, Mitsubishi's history, then Mitsubishi's role as a Sogo Shosha. I, I think I, you understand what Sogo Shosha means. Sogo means general or comprehensive overall in Japanese. Shosha means trading company. So Sogo Shosha literally means uh, trading company who deals with any any commodity, any product, or any businesses. So I do not discuss in this order, but uh, uh, just uh, please keep in, in your mind that I would be telling, I would be speaking on those four different uh, angles. Now, uh, this is uh, 
ranking of Japanese companies in size, first of all in size, uh, year 2010. Uh, as you can see, uh, the first first ranking is uh, in the order of market capitalization. You are, I understand, you are familiar with uh, the terminology of market capitalization. That is simply uh, value or market value of the uh, share price times uh, number of shares issued. So it uh, it is believed that uh, market capitalization represents uh, the value of each company. Uh, in Japan, as you can see, Toyota, NTT Docomo, Mitsubishi, UFJ Financial Group are top three companies in market capitalization. It, but it's interesting to note that there are three automobile companies, uh, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan, and uh, two financial institutions, uh, number three Mitsubishi and uh, Sumito Mitsui Financial Group as number six. And then uh, telecommunication information services company, uh, NTT Docomo and Nippon Telegraph and Telephone, so-called NTT. Then manufacturing companies such as uh, Canon or FANAC, it's an electric appliance company. Now, Mitsubishi Corporation is here wholesale trade. Um, I will discuss if this definition is does represent Mitsubishi Corporation's activities or Sogo Shosha's activities in general. Now, second uh, ranking shows uh, profit ranking. Uh, nine out of ten are same as uh, nine out of ten in uh, comparison of uh, market capitalization. Uh, so normally market capitalization represents the level of profit of each company. Yeah, can you? Well, this is um, there is a magazine called Forbes. Uh, I think you know that. And uh, Forbes announces uh, top 10 companies in, in the order of profit, market capitalization, or in companies' category, like uh, automobile company ranking one through to whatever number it is. And this is uh, the list of uh, uh, trading companies in they are Forbes' definition, and uh, I don't know how Forbes define uh, the trading company, but if uh, we rely on Forbes' uh, uh, definition, and uh, if we believe in their uh, numbers, uh, from number one, two, two, three, four, number five, uh, all the Japanese Sogo Shoshas uh, rank, ranking uh, from number one to number six, number five in the world. And uh, after that, Toyo, Toyota Tsusho as number seven, and uh, Soji to number 12. Um, those companies down to Soji in Japanese Sogo Shosha, they are so called Sogo Shosha. But <coughs> JFE Shoji Holding, Hanwha Holding, Nippon Steel Trading, they are specialized in steel products trading. And uh, two out of three are subsidiary companies of Japanese uh, steel making companies. So again, if you look at this uh, statistics, you may think that Sogo Shosha, or a general trading company, is unique in Japan. And uh, again, I want to discuss if this assumption is correct or not later on. Now, uh, I will first speak about the uh, birth of Mitsubishi. I use the terminology of Mitsubishi, sometimes Mitsubishi Group, or sometimes Mitsubishi Corporation. If I say Mitsubishi Corporation, that is a company for which I'm working now. 
If I say Mitsubishi Group, there are 28 different companies under the name of Mitsubishi Group. But they are 28 companies now are independent companies. But they are categorized as Mitsubishi Group because of the history. Now, when I say Mitsubishi, um, I refer to very original Mitsubishi company, which was born in 1870, and which is different uh, organization from what today we are discussing, Mitsubishi Corporation or Mitsubishi Group. But there is a kind of origin around 1870. Now, if I say 1870, you may recall Japanese Meiji Ishin, uh, which was transitional power from samurai class to uh, uh, imperial uh, family. Uh, it, was, uh, it took place in 1867. Um, at that time, there are many feudal laws in Japan, uh, like uh, Shimazu clan in Kagoshima, now Kagoshima, or uh, Nabeshima clan in Saga in Kyushu Island. I speak often Kyushu because I was born in Kyushu. So uh, that is just an example. But uh, in Tosa, Shikoku, uh, there was a very strong clan, a feudal lord. And uh, he was so smart, he thought that he has to do something because, you know, uh, time is changing. There will be something very drastic in the future, and we have to be prepared for that. Therefore, uh, the uh, feudal lord of Tosa sent a young man, Iwasaki, to Nagasaki. Do you know why Nagasaki? Because Nagasaki was the only city uh, where uh, trade with foreign companies was allowed. Uh, during Edo period. And uh, Iwasaki Ataro was sent to Nagasaki to buy what? To buy guns, to buy battleships uh, for the preparation of uh, foreign invasion, uh, which might take place uh, in, a f uh, in very near future at that time. So Iwasaki was sent to Nagasaki, and he tried to buy guns or you know uh, battleships. However, what they can sell, what he can sell from Tosa is just, uh, you know, uh, uh, products from uh, farming or whatever. So uh, the uh, value of uh, products from Tosa is not as big as the value of uh, guns or uh, battleships. So he made a huge debt in Nagasaki to buy those things from, from abroad. But because foreigners at that time, but in particular Europeans, like British, French, and others, had a big ambition. If they, they sell those things, even with, well, without payment or with very delayed payment, uh, they can sell some responsibility to the, uh, to the uh, federal lord. And, uh, at the time of opening up of Japan, they might be taking a much advantageous position through, through this uh, feudal lord. And therefore, uh, they sold many things to not only this feudal lord, but many other feudal lords, and with the expectation that they would be get, getting an uh, advantageous position in future trade with Japanese individual uh, regions. And Iwasaki uh, started business on behalf of his uh, feudal lord, but in 1870, the uh, trans, uh, transformation of Japan took place, and uh, he, he got uh, um, assets from his boss, feudal lord in Tosa, and he started business as, uh, for his own starting 1870. 
The name was uh, Tsukumo, Shou, Tsukumo Shoukai. Then later, the name was changed to Mitsubishi. And uh, his first business was um, logistics, uh, ship transportation, uh, transportation business by ship. But uh, that business was spun off, spun off uh, to form a different company, which was called Nippon Yusen Kabushiki Gaisha, which still exists today, Nippon Yusen, uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, bulk carriers uh, in this country. But started starting as a, a ship operating company, Mitsubishi company expanded its businesses to many different uh, business fields, including shipbuilding, of course, sales division, mining division means coal, C-O-A-L, coal and copper. And of course, um, being a company, he needed uh, uh, a uh, treasury office, which makes, which later became a banking division, and uh, being a company, the com the company owned uh, uh, real estate, which is, of course, real estate division. So Iwasaki Ataro uh, started from ship operating business and diversified to those different uh, divisions. Now. Japan was under the transformation from Meiji Ishin uh, to the uh, to the uh, new uh, new uh, new age, and uh, Japan, as you know, wanted to be uh, one of the uh, uh, powers, strong powers in the world, and uh, trying to catch up advanced countries at that time, including and in particular British, French and also Germany. And uh, during his uh, time, Japanese legislation or Japanese uh, system, political system, and the legal system or economic system has been transformed uh, to become much uh, similar to European system. And uh, in that process, Mitsubishi Honsha, which is in today's term, Mitsubishi Holding, was created. And under that holding company, those divisions had become a span of uh, independent uh, companies, but still 100% owned, 100 owned by Mitsubishi Honsha, which was a holding company. Then, <coughs> It uh, has become a big company until 1945. You know what happened in 1945, defeat of Japan in the World War II. And uh, famous Mr. MacArthur uh, came into Japan as an occupation army, leader of op occupation, uh, op occupation army. And uh, he thought that Mitsubishi or Mitsui or Sumitomo, those are so-called zaibatsu, were the, uh, one of the causes of World War II, the uh, Pacific Ocean War. Therefore, he ordered Mitsubishi, not only Mitsubishi, but also Sumitomo and Mitsui, Mitsui to be dissolved into very fragmented, small companies. And uh, Mitsubishi also uh, uh, followed the order, or well, Mitsubishi had to follow the order anyway. Therefore, first of all, Mitsubishi Honsha, or holding company, was dissolved, uh, ceased to exist. Then all those operating companies were uh, fragmented into small companies. In case of uh, Mitsubishi Trading Company, uh, was fragmented into 200 different small companies just after the war. Now, as you can imagine, <coughs> even uh, the company was transformed to holding company and operating company structure, Mitsubishi Trading was, or Mitsubishi Trading functioned as a marketing arms of other 
manufacturing companies or uh, supplier of raw materials or energy to let those manufacturing companies uh, operate. Therefore, in today's term, Mitsubishi Trading, this uh, company's role was outsourced company um, to purchase energy, raw materials for Mitsubishi Mining or Mitsubishi Shipbuilding Company and to sell their products internally in Japan or to export into foreign countries. So, trading company, Sogo Shosha, the definition before the war was to, to, uh, to function as an outsourced company for the group companies and uh, earn commission by procuring raw materials or energy or by selling products from those manufacturing companies. And then, all of a sudden, all the operations ceased to exist. And then, 10 years later, in 1954, the uh, order by General Headquarters, Makasa, was lifted. And then, those fragmented small companies were allowed to amalgamate once again. And then, after the war, 10 years after the war, those new companies were established. As I said, very original Nippon Yusen ship operating company through many changes and uh, reformations. After the war, it has become Nippon Yusen Kabushiki Kaisha, which is called NYK today. Very big shipping, ship operating company. Mitsubishi, um, Mitsubishi Shipbuilding Company Limited had become a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries which is well known as a manufacturer of turbine, uh, boilers, uh, even nuclear power generation manufacturer, and uh, you know those, of th those things. Mitsubishi Materials, it is a big copper operation or copper production or uh, coal production in this country ceased to exist because of the you know, exploitation, and uh, we don't have any coal reserves or copper reserves in this country anymore. But uh, Mitsubishi Materials Corporation is functioning as a smelting company. Uh, they buy copper ore from Latin America and uh, smelt it and uh, uh, sell uh, copper concentrate or copper uh, metal uh, to, as a product of their smelting facility. The uh, Treasury Function Banking Division of Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi has become Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ now. Um, real Estate Division has become Mitsubishi Real Estate Company now in these days. So what I say is in 1964, holding company disappeared and all the uh, operating company were dissolved but after the war those company were reborn as a new entity difference is there is no holding company on top of them and uh, everybody every, all the corporations have become independent Mitsubishi corporation was outsourced company for Mitsubishi group companies before the war now, after the war, Mitsubishi Corporation kept a function as outsourced company, but serving not only to Mitsubishi Group companies, but also to any other companies. Similar thing happened in 1870 and uh, 1964, which is 1874, 1870, Japan reopened from Sakoku time to a new modern society. Therefore, Japan needed reconstruction of Japanese industry and uh, try to catch up European uh, system in terms of uh, legal system, political system, industrialization, education, and everything. 
Similar thing happened in 1964, which is Japan was destroyed, nothing、uh, left in the country. Therefore, the government wanted to re establish Japan in terms of industrialization and the new democracy introduction to the、uh, country. Therefore, I see very similar environment. In 1980,、uh, 1870 and 1954, when new Mitsubishi Corporation was born. Now, I will explain later, but there are Mitsubishi Kinyokai、uh, organization, which is、um, a place, to, place where CEOs or chairmen of each Mitsubishi Group companies get together. Third Friday of the month, and to discuss anything but business. But business. For example, if、uh, Mitsubishi Group wants to make an exhibition in Shanghai, in a world, world exposition, then we have to share the cost, and they discuss how to share the cost and how to,、uh, how to keep the brand name of Mitsubishi high up in the high profile. Or, If、uh, we have,、uh, as we had a、uh, Tohoku disaster last year, and、uh, they get together and、uh, they discuss how to help affected people under the name of、uh, Mitsubishi. So they discuss anything but business.、Uh, that is the、uh, Kinyokai system. But anyway, I will refer to this system later on. Now, <coughs> I explained the Kinyokai. Again, this is a monthly meeting, third Friday, where chairmen and the CEOs of、uh, Mitsubishi Group companies get together. I listed 28 different Mitsubishi Group companies. I think some of them are quite familiar to you, some of them are not. For example,、uh, we have、uh, Kirin Beer. If you, are, if you like beer, I believe you have had、uh, Kirin beer once in your life.、Uh, Kirin belongs to、uh, Mitsubishi Group,、uh, but、uh, Mitsubishi Corporation doesn't own any share in Kirin. I don't say any, but、um, if, if there is any,、uh, very small. There is no influence as a shareholder. This is purely independent、uh, company. But because they share the history, Of Mitsubishi before the war.、Uh, Kirin Holdings、uh, willingly joined as a Mitsubishi Group company.、Uh, Mitsubishi Estate, real estate company, which owns Marunouchi, very expensive、uh, land in, around the Tokyo station, that is、um, also a Mitsubishi Group company. JX Holding, which is, you know, you don't even know if it's Japanese or American, but、uh, it was,、uh, this company was an amalgamated company of many energy companies, and one of them was Mitsubishi Oil. Therefore, it still belongs to Mitsubishi Group. But there are many Mitsubishi Group companies, and、uh, Mitsubishi Corporation is the only Uh, so called Sogo Shosha or trading company among 28 Mitsubishi Group companies. But Mitsubishi Corporation's business with other 27 Mitsubishi Group c o m p a n i e s is less than 5% of total revenue or businesses which Mitsubishi Corporation performs or does、uh, in a year. Now, I refer to a shareholding、uh, <coughs> structure of、uh, Mitsubishi Group companies, but、um, I discuss only Mitsubishi Corporation's shareholders.、Um, this is the、uh, most updated、uh, shareholder structure, and the top is、uh, 10 years ago. Now, as you can see,、uh, Mitsubishi is now owned 
by uh, foreign entities, foreign companies or foreign individuals outside of Japan, about one third of their total outstanding uh, shares. And uh, about 17% by individuals in Japan and uh, financial institutions, about 40%, then about 10% security firms or other companies. What I want to demonstrate by this slide is uh, Mitsubishi Corporation has become, ha, it has become more international, internationally owned company in the history and uh, individuals own uh, about uh, you know, 17%. In this category, there are some Mitsubishi Group companies, but mainly Mitsubishi Group's financial institutions, such as Mitsubishi Tokyo UFJ Bank, or Mitsubishi Securities, or Meiji Yasuda Life Insurance, which is a life insurance company among, in Mitsubishi Group, they own about 20% in aggregate number, but uh, none of them influences the decision of Mitsubishi Corporation. Uh, they are totally independent. And uh, we are seeing continuous trend of uh, this number declining in the course of the history. Now, uh, these days, if uh, you want to discuss about your own company, you have to refer to corporate philosophy, and I'm not the exception. Uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, we, as employees of Mitsubishi, should uh, look at every day, perhaps. And uh, this uh, <coughs> corporate philosophy is hung on the uh, wall for the, uh, every executives. I don't want to go to the details, but uh, I just want to refer to this first um, principle, which is shoki hoko. Shoki hoko means corporate responsibility to society. Um, I just want to ask you what society means in your own definition. Obviously, before the war, society means to Mitsubishi employees or Mitsubishi executives. Society is Japan. No doubt about that. Therefore, all the employees, all the executives of Mitsubishi Corporation or Mitsubishi or Mitsubishi Group companies, when they think society is Japan. So we have to contribute to Japan. And uh, I do not deny, because of that, Zaibatsu or uh, business groups in some way contributed to the war uh, or Japanese military aggression into the uh, continent. Now, we didn't change this principle. However, meaning has been changed. We now believe that this society means world, global. So we do not do business only for Japan, but we do business for the society, which is world. All the uh, 200, more than 200 countries in this world. That is, uh, that is a biggest difference in interpreting the corporate philosophy of Mitsubishi Corporation. And mind you again, Mitsubishi Corporation, although the history of route is in the born of Mitsubishi in 1870, but Mitsubishi Corporation itself, uh, shareholding wise, or history-wise, is a totally different company after the war. Now, next one, please. Now, uh, <coughs> I want to discuss current uh, structure of Sogo Shosha, uh, or Mitsubishi Corporation, uh, because, for example, our biggest competitor, Mitsui and Company, Mitsui Busan, their history is totally different from ours. Uh, therefore, I cannot represent Sogo Shosha in general, but I can 
speak only on behalf of Mitsubishi Corporation. Now, uh, Mitsubishi Corporation, uh, st uh, after the start of its um, foundation in 1954, after, I mean, new Mitsubishi Corporation, um, uh, Mitsubishi, a new Mitsubishi Corporation grew with the um, uh, expansion of Japanese economy after the war. Mitsubishi Corporation served as a procurement agent for Japanese steel industry or Japanese electric power industry for the supply of energy, natural resources, and uh, we, uh, we have become uh, a marketing arm of Japanese manufacturers by selling automobiles, uh, processed food, you know, paper, whatever, you name it. Uh, we, uh, we said we sell anything about human being, for example. We sell from the uh, cup noodle to a uh, rocket. Whatever it is uh, something useful for a human being, we try to sell and buy. And, uh, uh, you know, why this uh, uh, outsourced function worked after the war? Because manufacturers are busy in reconstructing the uh, country by building a new blast furnace for steel making, uh, building a new, um, you know, factory, uh, building a new... Uh, power stations and everything. Therefore, they couldn't invest in procuring uh, natural resources or energy, or they cannot place many employees in the uh, procurement of uh, raw materials and others. Therefore, they outsourced uh, those functions to trading companies. Therefore, when Japanese industrialization, post-war in in industrialization, uh, take, uh, took place. The Japanese trading companies uh, helped the Japanese manufacturers uh, as a logistic companies or outsourced companies for marketing and uh, sales. However, in 1990s, uh, Asian financial crisis took place. And not at that time, even before that, that kind of middleman function has been you know, undermined um, because of many things. Because one, uh, Japanese manufacturing companies, uh, through its expansion, had got the strength to do marketing or procurement by themselves. And it is particularly so for electric appliance companies like Sharp, Toshiba, Canon. They have their own products, and they want to make their own marketing uh, strategy. Therefore, they tend to do those marketing or procurement functions uh, inside of their organization uh, rather than outsourcing uh, to trading companies. Then, in 1990s, because of the financial crisis, Japanese heavy industries has been heavily damaged and uh, they had to uh, reorganize their businesses, including paying less commission to trading companies. So uh, the time was called as a, a winter time for trading companies, or a middleman die, uh, kind of uh, 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 sentiment uh, prevailed in 1990s. However, <coughs> what was uh, good for trading companies, including Mitsubishi, was that during 19, 1960s, 70s, when Japan's post-war industrialization uh, was booming, um, still Japan was not recognized in the world as a reliable buyer of natural resources. Therefore, Japanese government established uh, Japan import and export uh, financial institution which helped making uh, finances or loans for the uh, Japanese importers and encourage uh, them to collectively buy natural resources so that they can get a kind of uh, uh, advantage of volume. And trading companies functioned as a, 
uh, middleman for that. Uh, when Japanese steel companies wanted to buy iron ore, uh, there was no big iron ore supply sources in Pacific region. Therefore, they had to ask Australians. There was some Australian here. Okay, Australians to open up new coal mine or new iron ore mine. But the Australians said, "Well, you know, Japan was defeated by in the war, and they, you don't have any money. You don't have any uh, uh, credit uh, in the world trade. So." Without any firm assurance, we cannot open up a new coal mine in Australia. Okay. Then Japanese government, through the uh, Japan Import-Export uh, Bank, they made a big finance to develop new mine. And uh, Japanese steel companies jointly uh, collected a big order of uh, iron ore or coal. And the trading company made a contract with Australian developer and uh, uh, still not satisfactory to our Australian developer. And they said, we need a hostage. Hostage. Okay, I will become a hostage. I will take, uh, say, 15% of the stake so that if this project fails, we fail. So I will be a hostage in the project in Australia. So many Japanese companies uh, become a uh, minority equity partner with Australians or Canadians or Americans or even Indonesians to develop new natural resources uh, in the foreign countries. Now, in 1990s, we, ha we were under the pressure to diminishing uh, commission from Japanese manufacturers. However, we knew, we had known that by that time, that profit from that minority interest in energy or natural resources development is bigger than commission which we are getting from Japanese manufacturers. Therefore, around 1990s or in 1990s, because of the uh, uh, very difficult manufacturing, uh, difficult uh, economic uh, conditions for manufacturers, trading companies. Uh, learned how to become slightly independent from Japanese manufacturing companies. And they shifted their businesses to, um, to a log from logistics to, to production side. And this is a, a corporate structure of Mitsubishi Corporation. And uh, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six profit centers in the organization and uh, corporate um, functions uh, on, on top. Now, each business segment, were, many functions were trading uh, when it started in 1954. They, uh, they buy oil from Middle East to sell to Japanese oil refinery and uh, they sell uh, Japanese textile and export to uh, USA. That was a business model and uh, so-called commission merchant model. But in 1990s, because of the uh, difficulties which Japanese manufacturing companies faced with, we shifted our businesses into uh, uh, production side, such as in case of natural gas, we formed a joint venture with uh, Shell uh, to develop a gas field in Brunei or elsewhere and to convert it to uh, natural gas liquid for the transportation to Japanese uh, power companies for uh, gas power generation. And in that business model, we don't have to earn commission from the trading of uh, LNG simply because we are equity holder, joint venture partner in the um, production. Therefore, the profit from production itself is much bigger than commission itself. So same thing can be said to, uh, for example, machinery group. Um, we, rather than simply selling ship from a shipbuilding company, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, to uh, Greek ship owner, we buy a uh, ship from Mitsubishi 
shipbuilding company, and we operate that as a ship operator. That is more lucrative than just simply selling or buying um, uh, as a one-shot deal uh, to uh, to uh, other p people. So in early 1960s, each division has the same function. Um, to 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 buy products or commodities for the to sell, uh, just one shot deal. Therefore, even though each division handles different commodities or products, business model was same: just to buy oil and sell to others, or to buy processed food and to sell by sell to others. But now. Each division has different business model. Uh, in case of uh, uh, metals division, they operate coal mining operations in Australia. They are the uh, uh, joint venture partner in Chile copper mine. And uh, in case of uh, Living Essentials Group, it's a strange name, but um, this is uh, a consumer products division. Um, I think you buy things at the Lawson or 7-Eleven, and uh, I hope you know Lawson is owned by Mitsubishi Corporation. And if you are a good customer to 7-Eleven, please change it to Lawson. But anyway, um, you know, we own Lawson, and uh, owning uh, Lawson, we can provide products to Lawson. We can provide packaging services to Lawson. Uh, we can, if you have a Ponta system, you know, uh, you, you get a point if you buy at uh, Lawson. Uh, that system is operated by Mitsubishi Corporation. So uh, we do offer that kind of services to Lawson. Of course, if Lawson makes money, 30% uh, of the money is ours. Uh, we are as a shareholder. So um, rather than just to, just to sell uh, you know, cup noodle to Lawson, we uh, do we offer many different services to Lawson, and uh, uh, we regard Lawson businesses as one of the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, complex service provider to Lawson business. So um, we we have uh, you know many different uh, uh, business models in each division, and the uh, important thing is how to manage as a corporate uh, executive uh, those different uh, business models which is particular to each industry. Um, as I said, until 1990s, trading company's model is simple, buy and sell. But now you have to uh, be an expert in how to operate coal mining operations. And then other, other man is um, thinking how to effectively um, compete with 7-Eleven as a being a, a guy in Dawson. Um, natural gas division, uh, at, at the uh, time of uh, uh, March 11 disaster, uh, many nuclear power stations were shut off. Now, we quickly have to uh, reoperate natural gas power stations or uh, coal firing power stations or oil burning power stations. And uh, uh, it is not just a, a sell and buy. We have to uh, speed up our production from natural gas uh, production so that we can supply to gas power, uh, electric power stations. So uh, employees in each division have to think uh, differently from other divisions because of the nature of businesses. And uh, managing those kind of different business model is a very uh, big uh, uh, burden on the part of uh, executives. Because when two proposals come to an executive committee, one is to increase uh, capability of cup noodle production. 
And the other proposal is to expand our businesses uh, of natural gas production from uh, Brunei to Papua New Guinea. So how you compare those two different uh, business uh, proposals uh, to the management? That is the um, difficulties which we are faced with uh, day to day. Next one. Now, uh, the difference f between manufacturing company and trading company. Uh, if you are a car manufacturer, you have its own difficulties and unique features as being a car manufacturer. However, from our perspective, you are producing a car. Therefore, even if you are producing sports car, if you are pro producing a pickup truck, the uh, system is similar. And you can manage or you can establish marketing plan of a car in a similar way as you plan for pickup or plan for uh, passenger car. However, as I said, if you are in a convenience store business model, if you are in chemical products or pharmaceutical business, if you are in car business or if you are in iron ore production, if you are in energy, natural gas, producer. The business models are different. Therefore, we give a big authority to the top of each group. Uh, we call it the group CEO. Therefore, the top guy in this profit center has a big authority to determine uh, where he goes. Uh, if uh, in case of natural resources, uh, energy business, if we have operations in Australia, Indonesia, Brunei, uh, Malaysia, but uh, whether he has to go to Papua New Guinea or he has to go to South Africa, it's uh, primarily the decision by the top guy, top guy in this division. Now, responsibility of corporate executives is to make a prioritization of each business proposition from those profit centers and to decide how to allocate human resources and how to allocate financial resources to each division. And uh, as a, again, it is difficult to compare you know, food process, process to food proposal to a natural gas <laughs> business proposition. But we have to do it because we have limited resources in terms of human resources or financial resources, and we have limited capability to do everything. Therefore, there should be um, uh, some principles g governing all the business propositions across the board. And here is... This, this uh, uh, grouping is based on the products or commodity, but this grouping is based on the region. For example, in Australia, we have coal operations, uh, aluminum operations, gas operations, and tire distribution businesses or food businesses. Therefore, food business proposition is is decided by Living Essentials Group. However, in Australia, which is in Asia Oceania region, we have a regional CEO, and he has the responsibility to look at all the business propositions from the, his region and to prioritize all the uh, proposals as a regional CEO and make a recommendation to the board. Therefore, perhaps what he says uh, in the, uh, as a regional officer may be different from the top guy of metals division may say. He says, okay, it is most advisable to develop a new copper mine in 
Australia because of um, very stable government uh, structure, uh, very incentive given to a mining industry in, in Australia. Therefore, opening up a new coal mine in Australia is the best solution for the company, he may say so. But he may think that, well, we have invested heavily in Australia. We have to diversify our investment into other regions. So I want to open up new copper mine in Latin America. Then regional CEO of Latin America say, may say, all right, fine. However, country A in Latin America is politically you know, questionable. Therefore, even if you want to go to country A, I recommend from the, uh, as a CEO in Latin America, I want to recommend country B, which is more stable and reserve-wise, it is more profitable. So our decision is made, we call this vertical decision-making system, but always this horizontal, or regional uh, officers make a strong recommendation for it or against it. And uh, we have to make a decision in the uh, executive, uh, at the executive level, taking, uh, cons uh, taking a regional aspect or a commodity aspect into consideration. That is uh, our system. Uh, we have this kind of uh, main system. It's a vertical system. And a subsystem, which is regional system, because decision is so complicated. And we have to uh, look at uh, one proposition from different angles. So, but mainstream is commodity product angle, and the subsystem is regional angle. My responsibility in this structure is look at each country or each region and measure country risk. For example, country A, uh, well, I, don't, I hate to name it, but uh, for example, Egypt is a very big potential, potential, has a potential. However, today, Egypt is somehow unstable because of the, uh, as you know, Arab Springs thing. And uh, you cannot say for sure until the end of this year, Egypt will come back and will become a uh, big um, you know, ally for uh, European or Western business uh, society. Or it may take another two, three years before they come back. We don't know. But we have to make a judgment on that before making any decision. So um, I am sitting on this side, and I receive information from those regional officers and to determine business environment to make a uh, final decision as a company. Okay, next. Um, we have about uh, 200 offices around the world and uh, 500 group companies spread in the world. Among uh, 200 offices, I have visited only 100 yet. I want to visit uh, the remainder uh, before I retire, but uh, it's not easy to visit all of those uh, uh, offices uh, around, around the world. Next one, please. Um, I am responsible to take care of uh, Mitsubishi's uh, offices around the world, as I said, 200 offices. But we have, uh, uh, would you would ask no? Those foreign offices is under this, governed by this subsystem. Um, uh, uh, I have, uh, I'm sitting in this place, and uh, all regional CEOs report to me, and those CEOs and other general managers sit on 200 different offices in the other, as shown in the map. Now, 
But those guys have their own operating units under them, uh, independent, uh, directly reporting to those guys. And those are a list of uh, individual operations directly reporting to uh, group CEOs. I mentioned 500. Th those are just uh, uh, examples of those directly owned by group, each group of operations, like Metal, uh, sorry, next. Metal One is a steel products trading company under the Metals Group, and the CEO of this company directly reports to um, Metals Division, like uh, uh, Mitsubishi Shokin, which is a Japan-based wholesaler of food products, Agrex, uh, grain marketing uh, entity, Alpac Pulp is a wood chip pro production, uh, producer. Princess, um, UK regional food products uh, uh, supplier, Kentucky Fried Chicken Japan. It's owned by Mitsubishi. I think uh, you, know, you didn't know this, so, but uh, uh, we have other operations um, uh, uh, outside of Japan. But those are so called equity method affiliates, which is we own minority shares in those operations. When you say subsidiaries companies, we own majority of those operations. Now, um, again, uh, to repeat what I said, <laughs> this is um, natural gas liquid business value chain. When I say value chain, it means from the production to the consumption. Um, Mitsubishi Corporation, as a trading company, functioned as perhaps only logistic operations. When natural, natural gas liquid was produced at the uh, exporting plant, we buy it and deliver to Japanese consumer, mainly uh, Japanese gas company or electric power companies. However, as I said, because of the uh, middleman die syndrome or, you know, uh, uh, shosha, uh, winter time for shosha uh, environment, we decided to expand our businesses to upstream. So we have invested in uh, LNG manufacturing uh, operations in Brunei, Malaysia, Australia, Russia, Indonesia, USA, and Oman, Middle East. Now we are planning to expand our businesses in Canada. We have small operations already in Gabon, Angola, in Africa. We are, we are planning to expand our businesses in Liberia uh, for natural gas liquid and Papua New Guinea. So this is important part of our businesses and our routes is here. However, we have learned a lot downstream or upstream and uh, having all the stake in each business segment or pipeline makes our businesses more stable. You know, you cannot, um, you cannot uh, concentrate the uh, profit making in this value chain in one segment. If you have uh, stakes in all the segments, whether this segment is booming or that segment is booming, we have always stable income sources. If you have um, similar stakes, size of stakes in each business segment, that is what uh, we have been doing. I gave you an example of gas, but the fact that Shosha is doing anything, do, doing everything, like processed food, gas, oil, or automobiles, pulp. A particular business segment may boom in one year. The other segment may make a big profit in, 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 in times of a very difficult uh, environment, such as if you look at the current uh, unstable situation in Middle East, 
um, if uh, Hormuz Strait is closed, then Japanese 80% of oil import will be cut. Uh, but uh, if we can diversify our energy supply sources in other regions, which doesn't necessarily come through uh, Hormuz uh, Strait, then we would be better uh, off for uh, energy supply. So what as a trading company or Mitsubishi Corporation is doing will serve the um, security of energy supply. I'm not talking about only to Japan, but also to our neighboring countries in in eastern part of Asia. So we believe that diversification of our businesses or trying to uh, make a balanced investment overall in the world will not only benefit us, but also will benefit the uh, people uh, in the world. That is our belief. Therefore, we will continue uh, to have a variety of businesses in our portfolio, and uh, we will continue uh, expanding our business model to the areas which we have never uh, in, been in, or in the regions we have never been in. That is kind of strength which we have and uh, could be a weakness because trying to be, trying to stay everywhere, you have to be, uh, you cannot be a very expert in one region because you have to know all the uh, countries and you cannot concentrate in one place. Therefore, we know that our weakness exists there. But if you look at that weakness in different angle, it can be a strong strength for us uh, as a trading company. So to fulfill the weakness which we have, we always need a partner which offset our weakness and or which makes our weakness uh, strength. And uh, that is why Mitsubishi Corporation normally do business uh, with a partner who can be a product, pa product expert or who can be a regional expert or who can be a national expert. So that is our business model. And uh, in summarizing, our model is uh, to try to do things, new things in new frontier area and uh, sometimes transplant of a business model to other region or to a different business model to, to the uh, same products. Um, but if I look back uh, the history of Mitsubishi Corporation, I can say we didn't initiate all those changes, but environment forced us to change and the most important thing for us was to observe the changes of the world and to grab the reality of the change of the environment and adjust rather than to try to change the world. It is important for human being to change the world. However, as a business, uh, most important thing is to observe the reality and to grab the reality. And uh, without recognizing the uh, reality, we cannot change ourselves. I think for you young people, uh, my attitude looks kind of conservative. However, uh, business is something which many people depends on. And uh, uh, we, our policy is Rather than to make hundreds of millions of dollars in one shot deal, we want to make stable and very uh, widespread uh, profit base so that we can perform our social responsibility, which are taxpayer and the employer or many people, particularly young people like you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, uh, we'll probably just a few minutes for the questions. Uh, some questions? Yes, good. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for your time spending with us. Uh, my name is Boris, I'm from Germany. And uh, um, I have a question regarding actually something that you said at the end of your presentation. So finding new business areas, which you're not involved yet, but you should maybe be. And uh, there have been recent developments, like um, I call it uh, high value industries. So young companies, relatively young, young companies like Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram and uh, Groupon, they got uh, amazingly high valued. And uh, I would like to hear your opinion on this very young, very fast growing companies. Well, um, yes, I, it's amazing uh, talents which are developing a new business field, business uh, models. And uh, I admire those young people. And uh, without them, uh, innovation or new business models cannot be invented. However, you have to also recognize that if you see a one success story, uh, you have to find 100 uh, failure stories. Um, it is very high competitive business uh, practice. And uh, perhaps what I am saying is uh, our business model is to entertain uh, as much people as possible uh, for living or for a better life or you know, higher quality life. Therefore, one difference between new young companies and old companies like us is we have to minimize the probability of error in conducting our businesses. Therefore, b simply because we have 6,000 employees in Tokyo and 60,000 employees worldwide, uh, we cannot uh, make our mistakes and resulting in loss of businesses or loss of jobs for those people. Therefore, only difference is probability of error. How much probability of error you will allow your business as a young man? And what is, your, what is my tolerance to accept probability of error in conducting businesses? That is perhaps only difference. And I know that you young guys should go for a high probability of error practice because you have many chances to to do things, to do new things, uh, particularly as a young guy or as a small number of people. But being a big guy, a big taxpayer, you know, our tolerance to make errors will be very limited. I think that is the only difference between you and me. But is it like for you important for your uh, company that you that you pick out those new areas and that you may be get involved sure. in some of these industries? Um, we have. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, we have here global environment and the infrastructure businesses development group. Uh, this department, this group was called Innovation Group before it renamed the name, uh, the, the, the uh, group. Um, innovation Group uh, was obviously um, to try to new things. Uh, we tried to go for media businesses. We tried to go for uh, computer uh, businesses, software businesses, and contents businesses. We still maintain that businesses. However, we still we maintain that kind of uh, new frontier businesses uh, in each section. They, are, they have a small team of R&D type of uh, section. But uh, global environment, which is CO2 emission, reduction of CO2 emission or uh, uh, biofuel field or uh, solar energy, wind energy. Those business area has become very critical for Japanese, uh, Japan's uh, survival 
Therefore, we decided to concentrate that kind of R&D activities in this division. And this division is not among six profit center category. It is special category. And uh, this group is uh, making a, a innovation or R&D type of uh, businesses. However, uh, it is the change between innovation group to this group is we have focused in global environment uh, field for our R&D activities, R&D uh, financing uh, for the period of uh, current CEO's leadership. Uh, so partly yes, but partly no. We have somehow limited our R&D area uh, to this uh, uh, domain. Uh, thank you for, very much for your presentation. And you said like human resources are really important in Mitsubishi, particularly like, very structured and then division. You know, business model is different in each division. So I would like to ask you how to train your yeah, people. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, again, uh, how to train people. Uh, changes, you know, uh, from time to time. Uh, when I joined Mitsubishi in 1973, by the way, um, when if I say the year of my uh, joining Mitsubishi, you can easily, you know, understand wh what my age would be. Uh, but uh, you think you are young, and I am old. But don't, you know, you will become my age in a very short period of time. So. I tell you, you know, if you have time and if you have some hope or if you have some desire, do it now because you will become old soon. Now, <laughs> training is very important, but uh, if you go to university and uh, if you write down what your teacher says, it is not a training, I think. Uh, I'm not a good speaker of English, but if uh, I can negotiate uh, businesses with English, it is because I, when I joined Mitsubishi in 1973, my main job is to translate English articles, interest in our customers almost, almost every day. Um, I was in natural resources business, and uh, there are news uh, from uh, Australia, USA, from everywhere. And uh, it was four years ago. Therefore, there was not good communication system. Therefore, when I come to the office, I read the newspaper from overseas uh, offices and uh, particular interest, if there is. Then I made a translation in handwriting and rushed to our customers. You know, it's um, free news, but uh, it's important. That is a kind of service which I was in uh, when I first joined Mitsubishi. So um, perhaps on-the-job training would be the best training for your, for your people, young people, because you have incentives to do so. You know, if, uh, even if your English translation is just a translation of what is already written in, in a newspaper, it has some value to your customer. And uh, you are doing, you are a part of value creation, even if the value is this small, but uh, you are a part of value creation. And if you are training, you are, if you are receiving a training, uh, by m making a value creation, even if it's small, it will become a big incentive for you, and you will feel that you are a part of the team and uh, it will, uh, you know, uh, train yourself in a more effective manner. That is my belief. However, current practice is, uh, you know, many English classes for the newcomers, and uh, you have uh, you have to have 50 hours uh, English uh, communication 
uh, training course, and uh, after that you have to go to USA. It's good, but uh, for six months uh, for you know training, it is also good, How, and it is it gives a kind of equal opportunity for everybody. However, I still see young men uh, quickly growing when he is a part of the team, not as a special seat as a trainee. You know. Okay, maybe. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Ah, thank you. 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 あの、日本の未来ってのがどんな形で uh, very good question, a very difficult question to answer on this. Shall I in, in, continue in English? Um, for business people, to forecast what would happen in 10 years is nonsense. Uh, I can forecast, say, maximum only three years in business. Therefore, if you make a plan for 10-year term, it is, you know, no value for me. It is, I'm, I'm saying, it is very difficult to forecast what will happen in your life. is uh, is uh, my world. Um, I am confident in Japanese future, in Japan's future. Uh, and uh, I believe only confidence will make it happen. Uh, if you think Japan is, Japan is diminishing, Japan is disappearing, uh, Japanese population will become less than 100 million, and uh, young men do not want to go abroad, they want to stay in Japan, KU University speaking in Japanese. You know, people say so. However, uh, I believe if you think anything pos positively, and uh, if you try to uh, combine uh, business practices which is dominated by English, however, try to keep your own culture. It is perhaps Japanese way of thinking, Japanese way of uh, admiring beauty. I think uh, Japan's future, even though population will become less than 100 million, Japan's future is there. And uh, uh, economy is the um, game of uh, psychology. If you think that Japan has a, mu has a future and uh, you will have a great opportunity in the future, it will, ha it will take place. Um, oil is discover discovered, fine. But I think it will help. However, uh, if uh, we can establish good business model with, say, Middle East. And if we help people in Middle East to develop their economy by the Japanese contribution, oil will come without discovery in this, uh, in this region. Therefore, I believe important thing is to speak, it's not to speak English or not, but to believe in the future and to believe that you create something. Uh, you will be a part of business creation and value creation. And if, even if you are living in Japan comfortably, speaking in Japanese, uh, but if you do not forget this, uh, this one, uh, confidence in the future and confidence in yourself, I think the uh, future will become yours. I cannot predict what will happen in five years' time. But as far as you have this confidence, the, the future will be, will be yours. Any more questions? I think Veronica, you had one, right? Yeah. 
I wanted to ask you, how do you think the move towards renewable energy will affect Mitsubishi's business, in particular the energy business group? Again, if you are asking me what is the future of new energy in five years, <laughs> I have to say... I guess I'm asking, uh, you spoke particularly about diversification yeah. and so not investing in just one aspect of any business. Uh -huh. How much will, for example, research and development play a uh, role mm. in the advancement mm. of renewable energy for Mitsubishi? Mm. Uh, in uh, renewable business, we have uh, uh, joint ventures in electricity production worldwide and our target is... 20% uh, of our electricity will be produced by new energy uh, by 2015. Uh, you don't know Mitsubishi Corporation is an electricity producer, but we are as a joint venture partners in many regions. And uh, our electric, uh, electric power generation capability was only from coal and gas to date. However, we started developing uh, new energy electricity production three years ago, and uh, to 2015, which is five-year plan, uh, we will be having 20% of our total electricity by new energy, particularly solar energy. So uh, that is, again, five-year plan. I don't know 10 years from now. We may be expanding our uh, new energy electricity production more than 20% in 10-year term. But we, that is a kind of build-up system, build-up process for us. Uh, we will make longest five-year term, and normally three-year term. Uh, again, the world is uh, so complex, and uh, we do not predict uh, you know, too far away, uh, but we want to do something more solid today maybe within three years. Okay. Well, I think uh, we went over time, and uh, uh, thank you so much, um, Mr. Nakata, for taking time for coming here today to, uh, to our campus. I'm sure you have an unbelievably busy schedule, so I'm, we're so happy you could be here. And uh, I, I think I speak on behalf of the class. Uh, you know, I thought it was uh, very inspiring to see the uh, redesign uh, and innovation in the company went through, you know, the 1870 and 1945 and 1954 and 1990s. It was a real example of uh, redesign and, and innovation, which I think uh, is inspiring for our students. And it's uh, uh, really great to hear. And I like some of your keywords. I think we should all write down, you know, so when you're young, uh, go for the high failure uh, spots, right? And, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of inspiration for all the young people here. So uh, let's thank again uh, Mr. Nakara for coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I hope uh, I can see you uh, somewhere sometime in the future, maybe as a new employee to Mitsubishi. Thank you very much.